I really like looking for what I think are hidden companies or companies with potential or companies that are just off in the corner of markets, maybe undervalued, forgotten about. Because I think if you can find those companies, you've got a chance at truly finding companies with 10x or more potential over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. Now, this video is specifically for finding those companies in the small cap space. I'll go through other medium and larger market cap screeners in future videos, in, including things like growth stocks and more. But this is really about finding healthy small cap companies that might have potential in the starting point. Now, I absolutely love TradingView, and I'm using the TradingView stock screener to do this. TradingView.com slash screener. I've got a link in the description as well. Ridiculously powerful product to scan the world for all sorts of stocks. Now, as you can see here, if you click this market button, you can see I'm scanning the USA, United States of America. I'm based in New York City. I trade American stocks. I only want to look at stocks that are on US exchanges. Naturally, I could do the entire world or other locations. You can too. I'm going to keep it to USA. Adjust this video according to your location. The next thing I'm going to do, because I mentioned that this is a screener video specifically for identifying small cap stocks, is I'm going to type in market cap here and I'm then going to click manual setup. And what I'm going to do is basically tell the TradingView screener only show me stocks that have a market capitalization of 100 million to 3 billion. So I can type in 100M, really cool feature by TradingView. So you can type in the letter to 3B and then click apply. And what I've just done is I have made it so that this TradingView screener is only showing me companies that are worth 100 million to 3 billion. Now, for all of you new traders and investors out there who don't know what market cap means, I have a great explainer of market cap and enterprise value on my YouTube channel that you should watch. But in short, market cap is essentially how much you'll have to pay if you wish to buy this company. So for example, if I scroll down here, let's see if we can see a company that we'll know right away. Da, 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 da. Let's keep going. Oh, look, here's Under Armour. If you wanted to buy Under Armour today, it looks like at minimum, you would need to put together $2.8 billion to go ask for this, you know, to own this company. So that's how you can think about market cap and it's why it's really important. Now, I also want to say that in traditional markets, if you talk to some old investor or an old uh, Wall Street media person, they're going to tell you that small cap companies are from 250 million to 2 billion. I disagree with that because I think it misses too much and it does not adjust for inflation or growth. So I use 3 billion as sort of my peak market cap because of inflation, because of growth. We need to include companies that have a market cap of 3 billion or less. Also, because of inflation, it sort of, you know, evens back out to that original 2 billion number. But then I also actually reduce my market cap to 100 million because I do believe that if you're going to be looking for these types of investments at this small of a market cap, more is better because it means you're willing to really, really do a lot of research and investigate all the things you discover. And I, I don't really want to exclude companies. Now, in the past, I've even typed in zero, meaning like show me the smallest company in the market ever. But for this video, I think it's best to keep it at 100 million and 3 billion. So we've made our first step. The next thing I'm going to do is click the plus sign again. I'm going to type exchange in the search, click exchange, click the drop down, click manual setup, and then click NASDAQ and NYSE. The reason why I'm clicking NASDAQ and NYSE is because, quite frankly, I only want to work with the exchanges I know, that I've seen before, that I've learned about. All the other exchanges, if the stocks are listed there, I just don't even want to see them. Don't get me wrong. You might be able to find something on OTC or Amex, but NASDAQ and NYC have some pretty strict compliance requirements, filing requirements. It just is sort of a slight, you know, wall or defense against really bad companies. Don't get me wrong. Bad companies still squeeze through, but only show me NASDAQ and NYC listed stocks. Now, as you can see, we're down to 2,896 companies, but when we started this video, we were at over 13,000. This is why the screener tool is just simply fantastic. And by the way, now that I'm at this halfway marker of this screener video, I do just want to make sure you all know, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is advice. 
I'm just sharing it because it's important for me to get this information and these tools out there. I've been working in markets for over a decade now. I've helped build some of the largest platforms on planet Earth today for all things financial technology, for traders and investors. It just kind of feels like it's my duty to share as much as I know and help people. I manage my own money. I take my own risk. I've got real skin in the game. Everything I'm showing you are things I do. So look, if it doesn't work, I'm also sort of getting take, taking a punch to the face, you could say. So I think it's really important that you know that I'm in this just like anyone else who's trying to be a do-it-yourself investor. Now back to this screener tool, super important, because now we're going to get into the fundamentals. I'm going to click this plus button and I'm going to type in net debt. Now you can see it says net debt here. I'm going to click this. It's naturally set to quarterly, add filter, click the drop down, and I want zero and below. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to see any companies with debt. If it has debt, don't even show it to me. Just get it out of here. And I'll tell you why. It's really important that you understand that companies, when you see a price of a company or a market cap of a company, are not inherently showing you their debt load. So that's very, very important. Like, just have to get that right out in the open. You need to make sure you have a filter for debt of some kind, because for example, there are countless companies out there that have a market cap of say 100 million or 200 million, but then they have $1 billion in debt or $2 billion in debt. In fact, let me show you some of this, some of these examples. Let's do five to 10 billion. I hope, wow, unbelievable. So there are some small cap companies that have, let's see here, let's go to balance sheet. And here's net debt. Let's just see total. Okay, I mean, just this this is really jaw dropping stuff. Okay, let's scroll down here. What do we got? Let's see if we can just find a company that we're all familiar with. Keep going. Okay, well, here's Sp Spirit Airlines. We all know airline companies. So Spirit Airlines has a market cap, as we said, between 100 million and 3 billion. You may say that that's, that Spirit Airlines is, is worth less than 3 billion. But check it out. They have $7 billion in total debt and they have $1 billion in cash. $7 billion in debt minus $1 billion in cash is $6 billion. That's not great. So their market cap is a little deceptive. Once again, watch the video on my YouTube channel about market cap versus enterprise value. You will learn a lot from that video about why this is such an important thing to do. So I'm actually gonna do zero and below. And now you notice that they are off my list. I do not have companies like Spirit Airlines on the list anymore. I don't even wanna dive into that aspect of a company. Debt markets are complicated. They draw a lot of smart money, a lot of loan sharks. There's a lot of short traders there. There's a lot of sophisticated trading going on. That's for another video. Okay, let's keep this going. I'm now going to type in free cash flow, but use free cash flow growth. Trailing 12 months is perfect. Click add filter. And in this example, I just want to see companies that have positive free cash flow growth over the last trailing 12 months. So I click 0%. And as you can see here, we're adding filter after filter after filter. I'm now going to type in revenue and I'm going to do revenue growth, trailing 12 months and I want to do 0% and above. So what's happening here is I'm adding these filters to ensure that I am finding companies that fit a specific parameter. Think of a pasta strainer or any type of strainer. You put the pasta in the strainer, water gets through at a certain rate. If you make the holes on that strainer smaller, the water's gonna go through you know, slower or potentially maybe not at all. What we're doing is we're tightening up our strainer so that we are only letting specific companies through that strainer and then to show up right in front of us here. So now we're at 178 companies. Now what we're going to do is really make sure that we have a sound company. And what we're going to do is we're gonna type in quick ratio, quarterly, that's fine. And we're going to do one and above. So quick ratio for those who don't know, is a way that quickly looks at a company's liabilities and its assets on hand and 
looks at the two of them and says, does this company have enough assets on hand to cover all of its liabilities? If it's one or above, then it generally means that it does have that capability. So we just did one and above basically to say, once again, we want healthy companies. So now we have 159 companies. So this is quite the list of small cap companies. Now you're probably saying, okay, that's still too many companies, but now it's in your hands because what you want to do now is discover what it is you're looking for. Do you want companies that are momentum and growth? Do you want dumpster, din, dumpster bin companies? Do you want companies in a specific sector? Because now I'm essentially going to say that if you want to filter this list further, it's really in your hands. So let me give you an example. See this sector button here? If we click this sector button, we're going to see all of the different sectors we can, we can filter for. So if you are looking for companies that fit all of this criteria, we could essentially now say, well, let's only see the financial companies. And look at that, only one financial company shows up. How about we do transportation companies? Only five transportation companies show up. How about we do technology services company? 43 technology companies show up. So really interesting that now you can start to whittle down the list depending on something you're curious about. Now it's up to you if you want to do this or not, but for me, I'm gonna reset it. I've got 159 companies here, and actually what I'm going to do is click performance. And as you can see here, there's a tab that says performance percentage one year. I wanna see which companies are performing the best over that one year. And what I want to do now is see if these are momentum plays or of interest to me. So what I'm gonna do is scroll down through this list. And as I scroll down through the list, what I can do is research into that company to see if it's worthwhile. Well, so I see True Car on the list. I actually just used their app not long ago. I bought a car through True Car. So let me go ahead and click True Car. I've now got the True Car page open. And now I can begin my process. I've got all of these key statistical data points here. I've got an about page, more financial data. I've also got social ideas to look through, news. And as I keep going down, there's just more and more information for me to digest. In a future video, I'm gonna show you what I would do next on the chart by analyzing the specific technical pattern of this true car stock and also looking at the financials but keep in mind that i've recorded quite a few videos about candlestick charting on my channel as well as going through financial statements so those videos will accompany this video really well essentially what you want to do with this video is observe the way i filtered down all of these small cap stocks based off of their financial health and then take it to the next step you're going to have a list of 159 symbols and you're going to want to go through that list. And there are some really interesting stocks, I must say, on this list as I just go through it. I know some of these companies, I've used them all the time. I'm surprised to even see them here under 3 billion. They just strike me as growth stocks or companies with potential to take market share. Just absolutely so interesting. But I should remind everyone that in markets, you know, the game is against you. There are 159 companies here. If we revisit this list in one to two years, I would not be surprised if only 10 of these companies were actually performing at a high level and breaking out to truly new heights. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you get started with the screener in building these highly custom screens following my walkthrough here to devise a screen for financial health, for a small market cap, for free cash flow, and trading on an exchange and in a regional market of your choice, and then taking it to the next level, which as I mentioned, I've got some technical videos on my channel about reading these charts and the financial statements, but this video was more so created to give you the key walkthrough about my small cap screen. So thanks for watching.